Hello, my name is Brandon Wendell and I'm an instructor with Online Trading Academy. I'm here today to talk to you about volatility in the markets, both how to measure it and how to trade it. When we're looking at the markets, typically what happens is that the markets go through both quiet periods and very noisy periods where they might move much faster. We can identify these areas and even predict where some of that movement might occur. Why might this be important, you ask? Well, if we're looking at a very quiet market and we're trying to anticipate how long it may take to get to our targets for our prices, we may have to take a little bit more time and be more patient with the trade. The trends will be a little bit slower and may not reach our target in quite the time that we have allocated for certain asset classes we might be trading, such as single stock futures or even options. However, when there's high volatility, typically the movements are much more pronounced and therefore we will most likely reach our targets much, much faster and typically the trends will tend to continue. Well, we can use a couple of tools in order to measure that volatility and see what kind of trading we should be doing as well as perhaps what kind of securities we should be trading. I've got a chart here of the Nifty and in looking at this chart, first of all, we can identify areas of low volatility and high volatility by understanding how volatility works. Volatility is simply how far you're going to be moving in relationship to an average. If you're moving very far, you'll typically see periods where there are large candles both to the upside or to the downside. However, in low volatility periods, you will start to see smaller movements and even smaller candles. We can verify this with a couple of studies that we have for our program. One would be the average true range. And the average true range is right here on my charts. It's called ATR. The average true range simply measures the movement between the highs and lows of the candles and it also includes any gapping activity from the previous candle. So if we take a look at this, let me go ahead and put in the data window, we can actually see the average true range in red, the true range or simply the difference between the high and the low of each candle plus any gapping activity that may have occurred from the previous candle is in green. Right now on the Nifty, I'm looking at this candle and it's showing me that I have a true range of 148 points. However, the average true range or the average of those periods over the last 14 candles is 117 rupees. So that tells me if we have a high ATR or an ATR that is rising, we are becoming much more volatile and are likely to have the overall trend continue. However, when we have periods where the ATR starts falling, as we do here, you can see that through October into November, the bullish trend that we had started to reverse because of the low volatility. It's almost as if you were to throw an object in the air. When it leaves your hand, it has high volatility and high momentum. But when it reaches the apex where the momentum from the force of your hand throwing that object up meets up and gets overwhelmed by gravity pulling it back down, we have low volatility and low movement. The same thing happens in the markets. We go forward here, we see that the volatility starts to drop and the downward trend started to reverse. Overall, volatility picks up again, the downward trend resumes itself. Once again, volatility drops and we may be near a possible bottoming. So overall, volatility can give us a little bit of a clue as to which way the markets are potentially going to be going if that trend is continuing or is likely to reverse. We can also use this volatility measurement to understand where to place stops. Ah, that's a topic for another discussion. Anyway, one of the other tools that we could use as well for measuring volatility and is very, very useful is something called the Bollinger Band. Bringing up this indicator under the Bollinger Bands, we will see, I'll put this in as 20 periods, and I'm going to change this to an exponential moving average in order to get a little bit more sensitivity in the reading. Putting in that particular indicator shows us periods of low volatility versus high volatility. What this measures is the amount of what they call deviation from the norm the normal being the average price, and if we move to far deviations, moving very far away from the average price, we are unlikely to stay there and should revert back to that average very soon. Well, the wider the bands are, the more volatility we have, and the narrower the bands are, the lower volatility we have. 
If you notice, here we have very tight bands, low volatility, and the average true range is declining. Well, this is kind of important if you're an options trader as well, because as an options trader, many people make a mistake by misjudging volatility and only focusing on the direction of the underlying security. Well, if you know how to judge volatility and how volatility affects option pricing, you can maximize your potential profits and minimize your potential losses. As a stock trader, we can also identify when trends are likely to resume and possibly in which direction. These indications tell us how trend is strengthening or how trend is weakening. For more information on how to understand these, I highly recommend you get educated and take one of our courses at Online Trading Academy. Until next time, trade well and trade safe. My name is Brandon Wendell and I hope to see you soon.